Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to BarCast TV. It's December 15th, 2023, and this is At The Bar with LSR. Welcome back. Hello, guys. Hello, BarCast. Happy to be here. It's okay. been a while. Yeah, it has been. Um, been a long time, a couple weeks, but been really busy, and we're back to making some videos, so thanks for joining us. Yeah. Let's go. That being said... What is this? A V and eight V eight. Yeah, that's right. So what's we're, going? <laughs> we're gonna analyze a, a little bit of a match here between, of, like, these are all. This is like a what an OP lobby played at primetime EU. So we got all the big names in here. Today, though, for our purposes, we're gonna take a look at two opens from two separate players on two separate teams. So, do you want to introduce our players? We're gonna be analyzing LSR. Oh, that's uh, Chisato and Randy, apparently. That's right. Both starting on the corners in that safe, safe, tucked uh, spot right there. So before we get into this, um, maybe who do you want to look at first? And for like, at what point do you want to stop and stop and reload and to uh, analyze the other players open? Oh, I think it's interesting. First, I would love to already see... Um, because the wind is high, so I'm really curious to whether players go to like opening solar or wind. I, I, I assume Randy's more of a wind boy, and Chisato has been pretty likely likes to open three mixes into solar, and then mm. he likes to cycle it, which is like the ultimate tryhard strategy. But I think on this map it makes complete sense. I would do the same um, if I was me. That's fascinating. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the way you do it is you do three mixes and you stall like a little bit since it's really close, but then right. you switch between the sellers. So that's something I would expect uh, out of the uh, guy. But, you know, uh, the wind is 12, but uh, rapidly going down. Uh, if it was like nine, I do believe uh, you should go solar. But uh, yeah, uh, he decides to go for the wind. So a little bit sad. Didn't see the wind dropping. Right. Just barely okay. stalling Eve, and so and he's gonna try and force a factory here. I think it'd be a smarter. Well, that's a little bit of a mistake right here. Yeah, he realizes and gotta fix that now with the solar. Uh, Randy also making solar right there on the other side after okay. making two wins, preferably. You can see that on the mini map here. Um. So yeah, bot lab opening on the high ground. This isn't the wind, or sorry, air position, or is there really no dedicated air player on a map like this? The TX-55 is technically the air player, but, uh, you know, this is a lane map. Everybody's supposed to be contributing. There is no real tech line. Uh, right. And, well, the the only pocket position is TX-55, but, uh, you know, as part of the barcode, I know that you can make any position pocket position if you really try hard. Yeah, for sure. Uh, just you working just as a team like, really good teammates. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it looks like you end up moving into some, like, a, at least six mexes, I want to say, or Trisados, right? So how um, how quickly is he going to scale up his build power, or E is something I'm interested to see. Looks like he's opening Constructor and Bot first into a second one, grabbing these mexes close by. Yeah, uh, there's plenty of ways to go about this, I think. Vehicles couldn't be bad as well, more build power, faster mex capping, but... You know, you're kind of limited on the metal here with 1.8 mixes, so it's 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 it's, it's pretty good. Uh, yeah, decides to move on. Uh, nice double expansion going on here. Get some resbot. Yeah, resbot with the crystals. Probably that's why he picked the bots. The reclaim is too good, and he really really loves ticks as well. I so. did not know that. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna stop an incoming tick rush here. Really cool control he moves there. His, moves his ticks and then and gets the kill uh, because of the movement. And is everything kind of going for him? What do you think about Resbot on, like, just in general as a... I'm going to pause here. Resbot quick. is a really, really strong unit, I think. Uh, it's impossible to catch. I think if you have a perfect micro... The, the better micro you have, the Resbot is better. Since technically it's, like, really, really hard to catch. And provides a lot of utility and allows you to snowball fights. You shouldn't supposed to snowball. Like, it's one of the biggest advantage units, I do feel like, uh, hmm. that gives you... Um, but yeah, we're not in a bot meta anymore. Like, uh, people have been talking much about the Janus and, 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 and other vehicles going on. So maybe it's more balanced now. 
not a lot of players play bots, as you can see. There's <laughs> almost everybody else is playing vehicles, which wants to get frontline. And you know, we have, vehicles are obnoxious in this day and, and time. So, but uh, red bots are quite up there, right? They just are utility-wise really, really good units. Um, I I would add one thing to what you said. It was all perfectly uh, perfectly uh, good explanation. Is how this stabilizes any kind of wind open. So having this extra income, it's like you, it's like um, it's not insurance. Yeah, so you to can speak. click on. Generally, I would think one res bot generally brings about one uh, advanced solar sword. Here, right. it's like a little bit less. It does depend on like map makers' whims and wishes. But yeah, you can think about this as a one guy. For sure. So it's just it has so much utility and so many different capacities i think just this unit alone makes bots completely viable like still in in my opinion but yeah that's i thought that'd be a good thing to talk about so we can unpause the game continue on with this uh, analysis so interesting you said about how we're kind of not in a bot meta yet just out of here one of the best players you know on the in the game at the moment is uh choosing to open that well, he's making uh, rocket bots. Our, our modern rocket bots are really good. They're extremely fast. They fire really fast. And uh, rocket bots have been received buffs. Like, if uh, like when I would like to play, like having rocket bots is 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 is, is, is really good. They um, they they do they do win lanes. Uh, mm -hmm. The issue is like if they if they get to fire their stuff and with a critical mass they can beat some vehicles, especially if you couple that with like LLTs and 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 and, and other stuff. And is uh, Flash is also playing bots uh, when laning again him technically he will be the first there. I just wanted to check the look at compare the stats between the arm and the uh, uh arm and the core rocket bot so uh, arm has got 51 speed whereas the core has 48 so slightly faster i think they have the same range right 475, 475. yeah, yeah range is the best. reload might be also a little bit might be same. i don't know so this is interesting he actually i think he just started with two ticks and then immediately moves into rocket bot production so a, a little greedy i think uh just really relying on not having any run buys i think that's Fine. The only thing is, like, if you get blitz rushed, but people do not play that. Uh, people play more conservatively. You can see Flash did make more, like five, uh, five units. Right. But and blitzes are. But as long as you make LLT at one point, it should be fine. Uh, I see. So like any LLT at some point. I mean, you presumably could see the units coming, and three construction bots can. You can at least get an LLT up in his main base and protect that. I don't know about these expanding construction bots in the back of his base but i think i want to just pause here and look at what where chisato is at so far so obviously he moved out with the commander i think what was it after the second construction bot i think uh i think he had the third one being made but you see in the back of his base he's finished capping these mexes he made a single energy converter to balance his Excess E. We can look at the stats and see actually how much oh, he did. He's exit. doing really well. Second on power generation, probably due to them making the solars and uh, two yeah, solars. Wind's been kind of blessed as well. Uh, usually on two fourteen, it can get a little bit sus, but uh, you know, and also due to the fact that his wind production is far away from any uh, like uh, construction turrets as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, something so, you see a lot of is people. But yeah. that's, this is like kind of safe and kind of AFK. Uh, you just like set it when you start the game and then it's just, you know, making. Right, yeah. And, and it's um, two bots scaling wind as we have three bots assisting the factory. And we're about four minutes and 20 seconds into the, into the game. And uh, of course, at the front, I just want to note this really nice radar positioning, super clean. And he had a really nice path with his commander walk as well, so... Pretty efficient commander walk, just grabbing mixes and moving yeah. pretty, pretty much. Early as well. Yeah. Uh, and we see that reflected in the fact, I think he's maybe a little past halfway. I think that'd be like the halfway line between the two lanes. So he was able to get a little bit of extra ground on his opponent, and we'll see if that makes any difference at all. Not going to do kind of extremely well. Uh, well, the Whistler is going to harass his position without any much of the contest, so he has to pull back right there. This is the call ready and, you know, the... Yeah, but the guy... Oh, no, we'll, we'll go into actually nibble there, so... Uh, 
What works for him is his commanders there, so Rakos will be actually able to take the fight and you know, get that repair. Yeah. yeah. So this is enemy and this is like what players are um, not complaining about, but it's like the situation you get into going bots is like you you run into these whistlers, which obviously have more range, which you can get kited all day, and then like they're just building up in numbers. So it's like, how do you? What do you do from this position when you're stuck in your range lane? Range isn't that dominant, I, I do believe. It's, uh, you can check this. Uh, it's five, five. seven. Well, it is pretty dominant. But yeah, the Whistlers, it's kind of hard to turn. And, and, and then the Rockos have... Much better agility, I guess. And... Nice control. Yeah, armor and the Rockets are really, really uh, agile. And you can get like, was it like 120 versus 220 or something, right? So you can get two Rockos per one. Uh, Per one uh, whistler. So yeah, that's yeah. an answer. You have like the numbers, I suppose. Are you thinking about a, a like a t Trek Tangison? I don't think Chisato is. I mean, he just keeps making rocket bots streaming across the map here. So, well, they are something that you know, uh, it's dumb rockets, right? So they do stack inefficiency. What is this one here? Yeah, he's almost picked off that uh, little rat Lazarus there. And, I mean, he's doing his thing, he's holding his lane, he's not winning it, like, outright, but he's definitely... Oh, he's kind of winning it, he's been denying the mexes, right, right, from right. the opponent, those two mexes cannot really, like, flash, he's trying to build it at edge now. Right. Okay. Even though the guy behind it is, like, full-on whistlers as well, the issue is, like, he's now squeezed between two commanders. Mm-hmm. And then, then it's the strawberry he, who needs to kind of support and carry it. He needs to put pressure, but, uh, you know, he has some already. I feel like if you had a couple of units, you could have made a play and uh, taken out Indeed. Flash here. Yeah, maybe, maybe risky with the yeah. bombs. I've seen nowadays people are really, really efficient with the metal. It's like kind of hard when I started playing here, but it was like fighting corpses everywhere. Now it's just like skirmish, 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 repair, repair. Nobody loses units so much. Mm. You can see just uh, like the guy with the whistlers didn't lose whistlers even, like, and he's a new, newer player. Yeah, who would... I know has been getting some pawns, right? Chinese. Okay. Yeah, right. he's completely new player, you can see, and he already uh, understands the power of uh, metal efficiency trading, right? He might not make eco in a uh, background, but, you know, he has units and he's actually extremely hard to beat for a completely new player. Yeah, it shows you the... And scaling energy, doing everything he mm -hmm. needs, so mm -hmm. that's the... So yeah, and then just start a webs, he's uh, resing everything he can. I will say with the rocket bots, there's a little bit of like of an overfire with their range. So is it? I think he's doing something at the base. You can clearly see. Uh, I mean, just Sato is focused on his base, probably doing something else. Yeah, I guess you can see he just dropped the T two. Right, and re using a res bot to reclaim the lab. I've been seeing more and more of this pretty cool, uh, pretty cool, cool use yeah, of the build pair. Um. So what is that? About seven, seven. We'll just say seven ten, maybe seven minutes. He's just reclaiming his factory. He's got enough units at the front. Um, he has got to, and he can give space. You know, Strawberry's doing good. Flash isn't able to achieve much of the objectives. He's been denying mixes. I mean, Flash been able to squeeze the the the, the, the twilight there, but uh, mm -hmm. other than that, the it's not that great for Flash. Cool. So, you think? I think we should maybe take a look at Andy's start and find a, a little compare and contrast between these two players. Yeah, of course. Cool. Let me leave this replay and um, I'll beat it, boot it up again and then we can take a look at how Andy decided to decided to open and what he does to kind of win his lane. So well, I can spoil you already. He did co-op strategies with Shimon there. <laughs> So he's playing with his friend there. I think I clicked that. Here we go. Okay. So do you do you ever open bots in AV8s or like what maps would you? I love bots, but I do feed with the bots. I haven't actually grinded much of vehicle meta. 
I like Bloodsile. I'm a classic, like one v one, like uh, grunt, uh, grunt fanboy. Okay. okay, so I'm actually much when I play like eight v eight. I'm usually much better with the bots. Uh, yeah, I don't I... know how people do it with vehicles, but oh. you know, it's it's not in the mood. I just like having a bunch of uh, different roles. I like push the thugs to one side. You know, I threaten with PVs from completely different plank, and then I like rock some rocket bots. Uh, harassing and sieging and it just makes complex to, to, to attack me but uh, you know Januses are pretty good nowadays they they are like w w one one click win they beat uh, mostly everything and they're hard to chase down and they kill, are so. yes I wish I wish they were a little more vulnerable to bombers uh, it's it, it's kind of Fortunate, unfortunate that the meta is like Whistler Janus, right? So it's like the Whistlers, of course, do a great job of protecting the Janus from air units. So maybe not the most viable counter to the slow moving, slow moving Janus. Yeah, bombers used to like bombers are good, like versus things like T two, like snipers still, and other slow moving units. I think uh, you cannot get um, bombers to counter Janus because the Janus is like. You can start with like two scouts into Janus, right? And you have like <laughs> three Janus spread out, and nobody's gonna gather enough bombers to 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 to, to like efficiently kill. Everybody's just gonna build AA and camp, right? Or they're gonna get healed. So, uh, yeah, bombers just cost too much in terms of build time and energy cost. Uh, all the more reasons to play vehicles, right? <laughs> I guess that's why you see everyone going armed vehicles. But yeah. Um... Let's look at our man uh, Andy's play here and see what's different. What he does. What does he do the same? And uh, yeah, see see how they spend or burn through that starting mass. I think is the real big takeaway I wanted to look at here. I like the early windmill, especially if you see if it's going high right here now. Cool. Obviously, we're gonna know it's gonna drop, so yeah, yeah. we'll do solar after. But he gets like this third mix a little bit faster just yeah. because he. Uh, Hey, still, still going wind. Interesting. If you have a little bit of E in the bank, you can kind of like yeah. tempt fate in some ways. I think he might be being stubborn here, in some ways. But uh, of course, we saw. Says, I don't like delaying my start. It's just for me. It's really simple. If it's under twelve, I go solar. And really simple. I I've calculated. I don't want my lab delayed. Like no way, no way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, I mean, that extra build power is just insane. I mean, what is it? What's the build power on a factory? 100, right? It's like 100 free, and then you like you have a bot, and uh, yeah, it's actually making the bot. Cool. So we see the same open relatively, just arm bots, of course. Uh, two ticks into three construction bots. Uh, interesting, we don't see a Lazarus out. Uh, he might end up slipping that in the build queue here in a minute. And just adding on extra wind turbines with the build range of his commander. So not moving, he caps his mexes, gets the factory up, and then immediately starts scaling the wind power so he can. And this new range and like the build power has been like the build range has been extended over the green circle nowadays. Mm. Yeah, you don't have to hit the center of the building. Yeah, I love like that change. Fine. Love that change. Yeah, I love it, but I think the circle is kind of hard to now hit. Uh, like it's a little bit. Uh... Harder sometimes to predict. I still don't know exactly how how like pixel, but I can yeah. place pixel perfect. <laughs> Something to uh, ask. I want to say that sometimes I've seen. I've even been able to build like just slightly out out of the range. It's kind of nuts, but maybe I'm just hitting the very absolute corner of the building. So very similar starts here. Two construction bots first, or two construction bots expanding down to these low ground, capping these mixes. Looks like this one's gonna be walking forward. Yeah, I'm gonna go and do a barcode uh, strategies of boosting other labs. Oh, apparently. Yeah, I didn't notice these two pro players, uh, pro shaman. Yeah. So yeah, and he's yeah. moving over here, building a construction turret. It looks like he's fixing his um, wind in some ways, getting this early energy converter. Is gonna come uh, reclaim his lab and build yeah. one on the low ground. Preferably, I think it's gonna go for the vehicle lab there. Kind of makes sense. Oh, it does didn't? Oh, he wants the max. I see. Right, good catch yeah. there. Honestly, um, 
and even placing this construction turret a little farther forward. So maybe giving his teammate a little extra space in his main base. Ooh. So he did end up going four construction bots, capping this mechs in the back, adding on wind turbines in the in the rear, just like Herman Chisato. Grabbing this mechs on this little high ground plateau, you can put that tidy radar at. And his commander is walking to the mid, and he's presumably going to be getting a vehicle. Yeah, boost Leno first, and pushes his. And Santa Claus coming out of town here. Uh, well, I think he's a, Is he boosting? I don't think he's working. No, he just him. now started. Yeah. yeah. Finally starts assisting this. Uh, I wonder. Um, I can't. Oh, he's gonna go T two right over, off rip Four here. Minutes. Oh, he actually bought the constructor from a guy. Up and up. Yeah, we see that he paid. Uh, oh, he has another it. teammate right there. <laughs> oh, those guys. <laughs> Yeah, working together. I mean, this is the secret, though, of uh, of these AV-8s. I don't think it's been completely solved. It's, you know, just how fast can you tech, essentially. It's such a huge, a huge advantage having this up. You can tech even faster at 3v3. Both high gain and uh, Shimon by barcode standard should reclaim their labs and give metal to Randy so he can finish it. T2. Just not quite start stalling yet. He's still got a couple hundred metal, and you see his teammates are actually feeding him metal. So yeah, yeah. is he going to get this completely up? Using some of it to add on some wind turbines here with his commander. You can see wind isn't completely cooperating. Just barely under 300 metal or energy per second. I'm going to stall a little. Push him on also sending a little bit of metal. Mm-hmm. Another 200. I think that's going to finish it, right? So it's just right at 90%. So close. 97. And finally, gets that. So what is the first unit out of here? Just a Mausers, meter. of course. There is, there is no better unit than Mausers nowadays. They build fast. You can do it on a lab. The only issue is, like, yeah, if Admiral comes in and Deegan's a lab, but I don't think Admiral has scouted the issues. I'm actually Someone's kind of holding versus two. I'm gonna pause They're giving here. some space. They're giving some space to the enemy, of course. Yeah. So he, they haven't scouted. They see the radar signature. I, I doubt if you would really know that's a lab here. It's kind of strange that these. I mean, you can know enough. it's a lab, but you don't know it's a T two lab, right? right so right. it, it. Uh... Interesting enough. This is really a low commander here. So trading a lot of HP. I think. A little bit of a mistake. So where did we stop at? It was about seven minutes. I think <laughs> this is kind of crazy. They showed us two completely different opens. Um, yeah, we have all the pro boys starting here on the one side. So I decided to, you know, completely deny everything with the Mausers. So I keep rolling. I hope they change the Mausers. I think they either should be something you do versus the pork or something that's like kind of expensive and long range and something with the counter artillery. Right now, Mauser is just versus everything. Right, right. Having it a little more, um, not utility, um, just like a specific role instead of being generally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Either like long range artillery or the like the something you. Hmm. Something cheap and you throw away versus because you need to punch you. This is a wild strategy. Now, like Andy's commander has arrived at mid, just well, I guess crawling with these uh, crawling with these LLTs, and he has these high tech units, completely owning his opponent's uh, lower tech uh, blitzes. Even so, um, I don't think yeah, I don't think they can do anything at this point. Yeah, yeah. and for like Mauser, <laughs> what? But Mausers, if they would cost maybe energy, would be a little bit better. Or the, the build, but the build time is so efficient. You need like one nano to, in order to pump, and you can spend all of the money with no issues. So what? What did he do? He shared one of these Mausers with his opponent. He or teammate. He made one, two, three Mausers, and then goes into. Yeah, T2 Maxes. Yeah. T2 well, Maxes. I mean. Just deny some frontal mixes and then just upgrade everybody else's mixes and it should be good. Very cool. Even upgrading his teammates' own mixes here first. Just trying to get the metal, uh, extra metal income for his team. The sooner the better, right? 
Oh yeah, he has to. Uh, uh, of course, the admiral and the enemy has pushed forward with the with, with the mixes. But yeah, now that Melzer pops, one of them will one hit. It's no biggies. And even Shamon is able to pe put so much pressure. You know, it's like really hard. What do you do if you face like Mauser's five minutes and you? Yeah, like, you just pull back. I guess. He's still like blitz. <laughs> it's just like what the hell. I mean, he's trying to get an advanced solar up. He stopped production out of his lab. His opponent or his teammate is still making pawns, right? So, I think these two players would immediately want to, you know, reclaim their labs and get this uh, T2 up as quick as possible. I think I'm gonna pause here. Um, this is about the same point. A really interesting open, actually. I'm gonna have to bring this to the table myself. I think that's a pretty strong open uh, to to show up in a team game with, assuming you have a couple teammates that are willing to yeah, cooperate. Pocket positions and tech positions have been pushing extremely early. Mausers, like, uh, I think the new meta is basically skip the T2 mixes, get like five Mausers because they're so incredibly good. And then, and then, because, like, no, nobody can do anything. You get like five Mausers and then you can just chill in T2 mixes and, you know, right, you right. The front. there's no really. You could you would think like maybe you can do like pawns, but uh, the pawns and the grunts have been nerfed, so they don't kill LLTs that much, and you know, mm -hmm. and, and Mausers trade pretty well, so there's nothing to push them off. You just make like LLTs and and, and, and push with Mausers, and what do they do? And like if all fails, you just keep your commander next to the Mausers, right? You can dig on the tanks, like like I think the if you go over the Mauser, isn't Mauser as complex to build as like a regular Stumpy? If you do advanced unit steps, uh, what just, is just just uh, like space maybe hold space, mouse over and hold space. Uh, is that not I? What is your? Yeah, I, I was gonna check on stats. grid, right? Like, what is it? Unit stats. Here, let me just start with custom. So it's like 5,000 to build some, what, the regular tank? Like you have a Stumpy right there up on the, like a, just a little bit north, you have a Stumpy right there. Okay, so maybe not that cheap but to build, but like I think 5,000 isn't extremely expensive. Oh. Well, it's, it's the range really you have. Like all this T1 is completely useless essentially because it's completely outranged by this T2 unit. And then like you can't dive on it, the commander's standing right there, he's just... Yeah, no, can't do anything. Yeah. Lightly making LLTs, completely fine, completely chilling. So, um, yeah, we'll have to see how the meta develops around this. Like you're saying, it's kind of shifting towards these really um, tech opens. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen it in myself, and even like three v three. So it was pretty wild. Um, playing against Zhao in a, in a was a, I guess a four v four on Comet Catcher. He had like a Czar and two Banishers like before ten minutes in the game. It's like what is this? Zhao <laughs> like Banishers for sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean you probably let him like on the combat that would be like a like you have a little bit wider lane to move around. Right, right. Uh, is is there anything else you want to kind of cover or talk about before we end this? Episode? Oh, this was a, a interesting. Uh... Interesting open shows you both the co-op and non-co-op both players. Maybe yeah, with Shadow plays his T2 off. Uh, we could uh, skip this off. Maybe what he does would be interesting since we see the Randy going straight to the Mausers. I think the Armada T2 bot lab is a wild choice. Did he hound? Yeah, he hounded. Yeah, he, he definitely isn't an under threat of dying at the moment, right? So he's so far forward in his lane. I, I'm sure he's confident in his micro enough to, to get this off. And yeah, it goes into 50 hounds, so. <laughs> yeah, no T2. No T2. No T2 mexes. Uh, not assisting the lab, this is like a weird. Yeah, didn't didn't guard because that's the issue. You have to issue the guard command after building, right? Uh, I've been thinking about it maybe. On the grid, it's like extremely hard to press O and then click after. Um, mm. Once you place the lab, you uh, the units do not auto support the lab. Right, right. Finally. finally coming back and assisting these hounds. Is there anyone else on their team going T2 other than I saw they had this one queued up? So just about finished. Reclaimed his own lab. His teammate is still making pawns. Oh, I don't want to hate to see that, but um, looks like there's a little bit of bombing run going off. So it looks like Chisato lost all of his Rocco's here. But the the hounds have made their way to the front line. But that's a lot of whistlers. 
Yeah, but might, might be overbuilding. I mean, Chisato shouldn't have lost the units. He should have reclaimed the units, preferably while while you know tinkering with the space. It's kind of mm, that's, kind of hard, but uh, that's you see the same kind of thing out of like reclaiming labs, kind of right before they die. But that's I've never I've never seen that actually reclaiming units like if they're less than maybe like. Oh five. well, Rockos are useless once you get the hounds. Like why would you uh, want the Rockos, right? So the idea is that you get like the units and then you kind of swap it out. And yeah, I mean, reclaiming, you should reclaim everything, like, uh, that's the new meta. Uh, if, like, it's, uh, if you played, like, Dota or League of Legends, like, Dota more, like, the last hits is really important, so you wait mm -hmm. till the unit, like, hits your tower and you just reclaim it at 1% and don't give them any metal income, essentially. Because your front build power is pretty good, like, sometimes repairs are not the best answer, um, because it's much easier to spend some of the build power reclaiming, and your lab is going to make the units anyway, right, so right, you right. don't lose any metal, you just pay the energy cost and get a fresh unit, right? I will say that repairing is free, so that is a thin line. It's like, is it better to just reclaim the unit, put it, put it into your next tech unit, or? Yeah, but you can, for example, reclaim the unit really fast and then make an LLT, mm -hmm. or you could like repair really, really long, right? So the units are not that. Yeah, and the scared the guy scares the guy away, but uh, whistlers already, and also the artillery counters. The whistler is really good, so strawberry realizes and pushes with the artillery, makes it really, really hard. This is, uh, I think what you said. Now, 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 now I would reclaim this hound, to be fair. Right, Maybe, right, right. Because you see, you will spend close to no build power reclaiming it. Your lab will still going to make the new hounds. You're not going to lose the metal. You have all the build power you have here. And then you can make more radars, more LLTs, or whatever you need on the front. You've been bringing these butlers. I've never even seen this unit, actually. Well, the butlers are pretty the good. Butlers. They're from wind farms. Okay. I've been a fan of no nano butlers even recently, especially with the uh, Rome tactics. We had like really, really good uh, strategy prepared for the Barcode tournament with butlers. You would like, we maxed out that thousand five hundred butlers at minute twelve, I think. <laughs> thousand butlers. <laughs> it was all of the build power. That's wild. I, can be I think. Uh... Chisato did a more a more standard open. Oh, this is really, really classic open fast hound. This is something from 2021, I would say even. Uh, all Flash is trying to pull some self D. Self D gets it off. He's gonna trap four of those hounds, and those are paralyzed for a long time. Eight, seven more seconds. Step forward gets is he gonna get all four of them? I think so. I mean, that's a nice trade there. What is the cost on those radar bots? 135 oh, they're, metal. They're ex extremely expensive energy-wise. They, 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 uh, they uh, running... You can, you can click on it once if it came out of Flash Lab. So they're... they're 100 they're energy. 100 energy. You can see Flash Incomes is 200 energy, so... 50% of his literally, energy. Literally, <laughs> <they're laughs> really sucking, sucking all of the energy he has. Oh no, on a slow map like uh, low energy map like this, it's. Uh... <laughs> Don't you love team games? You know, just. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. So I, th I think we should end it there. That that was pretty fortunate for us. We found two completely different games or completely completely different opens and strategies between these high level players. So, you know, take take this to your own games maybe apply it uh, get in the lab try it yourself get some yeah. teammates find right? yourself a really good teammate clan boys which you play like 20 years for like Randy <laughs> does and just do the Mausers apparently much better than <laughs> low Chisato but Chisato doing well as well so for sure definitely yeah um, yeah LSR hopefully we can get together soon I think maybe next week I might be uh, out of town but you know sometimes start of the new year we can Oh, for sure. Make some yeah. more episodes, yeah, man. Glad, uh, glad to cast one with you again. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, thanks everyone for watching, and see you in the next game. See you guys.